All right, here it goes. I will slice SU in a variety of ways for you today. Some good and some bad, some large and some small. Some will make sense and some may not, and some may be just totally wrong. In fact, I very much hope that they are totally wrong. I will attempt to deconstruct Singularity University's name, business model, strategic context, mission statement and accomplishments, organizational structure and their global plan. The very, so let's talk about the business plan, the very essence of SU's business model in five words. Create scarcity to sell abundance and charge an arm and a leg for it. So let me repeat it. The business model in five words. Create scarcity to sell abundance and charge an arm and a leg for it. Some may call this a paradox. Others can call this hypocrisy. So it is up to you really to call it whatever you want. Let me explain. And to do that, I need three of the most seminal books ever written and ever came out from Singularity University. Books that are amazing and that I recommend everyone should read here. And they're, they're the three books. The Singularity is Near, Exponential Organizations, and Abundance. I think everyone should read those three books. Those are amazing books. And the, the most recent one actually is called Future Crimes. It's by Mark Goodman. But it's a little bit different of a topic. All right, so let's see how Singularity University fits within the space of each of those books. I mean, it's the birthplace of them, right? So let's start with the Singularity is Near. Okay, the Singularity is Near, but clearly not near enough for its own titular organization to be actually about the Singularity. Which is why, when Salim Ismail often speaks, he starts by saying that SU is neither about the singularity nor a university. The question then is why is it not? What is more important than that? If an organization where Ray Kurzweil is a chancellor, where students get a free copy of the singularity is near, and which has the, the, world, the word singularity in its name, and is not really about the singularity, then what organization ought to be about the singularity and why name it singularity in the first place? To me, that's like saying that chocolate fudge is not about the chocolate. But let's not forget, Singularity University is neither about the singularity nor a university. It's not a registered university institution. So that's like saying that chocolate fudge is neither about the chocolate nor about the fudge. How much sense does, does, does this make to you? I mean, what is it about that, for God's sake, that if it really is not about the chocolate and it's really not about the fudge, then why are we call, calling it chocolate fudge in the first place? Why don't we just call it proper? But enough about the singularity, you may, you may say. It's not about the singularity. It must be about abundance, right? Remember the business model. Create scarcity to sell abundance. Let me give you a couple of examples. I was recently at the OCE Discovery uh, Conference in Toronto, and David Roberts, who is, I think right now, maybe head of faculty, or uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, he was the, the guest speaker from the Singularity University, and we were chatting about the earthquake uh, in Nepal, and he was about to deploy with the drones there and stuff like that. And as we were chatting, there was a girl that came to us and addressed David by asking him, can I see your video somewhere online? To which his response was, Singularity University doesn't like me to do that because they like to charge people for it. So the answer is no, you cannot see my video elsewhere. To which I was greatly annoyed, as you can imagine, and I couldn't help myself but saying, the birthplace of abundance is a perfect example of a scarcity mindset. To which, of course, he was greatly annoyed by. And most recently, just a couple of weeks ago, some of you may have been on the phone call about setting SU chapters and with Kiara and a couple of other people. And the people on that phone call who was trying to set up a chapter, maybe in Canada, maybe somewhere else, were asking, 
can we have some videos, please? And the answer was, yes, we have lots of videos. No, they're not for distribution. So to me, that sounds more like one of the big music labels from 15 years ago, or some of the book publishers. But it entirely doesn't sound like the abundance mindset of an exponential organization. So keep in mind the business model I said, create scarcity to sell abundance. But the point here is that despite Peter's brilliant book on abundance, Singularity University clearly does not take it seriously because it has both a scarcity mindset and a scarcity business model. So now let's talk about the third seminal book that I believe everyone must read, which is 50% uh, uh, of it, if not more, was created right here, which is the reason why I'm here, and that's Exponential Organizations. Yuri is a co-author. Many of the people from the team that, was, that did all the heavy lifting on the book are probably here in the, in the audience. You guys did a fantastic job. So the question is very simple. Is Singularity University an exponential organization? Well, let me answer it this way. To this day, I have not met a single faculty member or a GSP student of any year who has told me that they thought Singularity University is an exponential organization. In fact, in my recent interview with Salim Ismail, who is the nominal author on the topic, even he said that SU is not an exponential organization. So the question is, how long can you sell others on the idea of exponential organizations if you're not one such yourself? How long can you walk the talk, or can you talk the walk without walking the talk? OK, so we already mentioned the three most seminal books that come from that community. Very fruitful. Amazing books. Now let's talk about the mission statement. As Yuri calls it in, in the book, it's massively transformative purpose. Vital, right? For any organization. And SU has the best MTP ever. Positively impacting a billion people within 10 years. Brilliant, right? So let's judge them according to their own meter. Let's see how close they've gotten. Let's assume I'm totally wrong in the previous claim that I made, that they're not an exponential organization. And let's, see, let's presume that they are. So 10 years in exponential growth to reach a billion people. Let's reverse calculate that. We are currently at year seven, or after year seven, actually. So they have three doublings to reach a billion. Let's work that out three doublings back. One billion in half is 500 million. That's year nine. Year 8 is 250 million. Year 7 is 125 million people. So has SU reached 125 million people in the last seven years? I think the answer is pretty obvious. I don't even have to say it. Let's further judge SU on its own record and according to its own goal of educate, inspire, that's a quote, educate, inspire, and empower leaders to apply exponential technologies to address humanity's grand challenges. Has it been successful? You may say yes, I will say not so fast. Seven years after its beginning, as far as grand challenges are concerned, I personally fail to see a single grand challenge where SU has directly been able to make a measurable difference, let alone solving it. In addition, when it comes to the educate, inspire, and empower mandate, SU has had some notable success. But I would like to suggest that when one takes into consideration the SU resources, its location, a trillion dollar network, its revenue stream, its human resources, its sponsorships, it does not have a very good return on investment. For example, the Khan Academy and Wikipedia both have better return on investment as far as educate, inspire, and empower are concerned, with much less hype too. And they're both actually exponential. If there's one area where SU has been undoubtedly successful, it is to feed its own growth. 
raise and or change more mo charge more money to hire more people and spread the hype of its own legend. What is worse, I will argue that SU is already starting to show diminishing returns to scale, i.e. as SU grows already, each unit invested in SU will bring about fewer and fewer units of the desired outcome, while the previous two examples arguably still show accelerating returns per unit invested. And that is one of the major difference be differences between an exponential and a classic organization, which I believe SU is absolutely a classic pyramidal top-down, heavy organization. Here are some other major problems with SU, i.e. major obstacles to achieving its own mission statement. Some are tactical and some are strategic. Tactical. SU's current model does not scale. In my view, SU is not an exponential organization because it doesn't scale. The business model of bringing people to a location and educating them is a thousand years old. Flying over and doing customer-specific seminars is better, but it's still only a marginal improvement on that. So in short, the tactical problem is that SU, what SU has embraced is a closed garden, classic scarcity educational model. So perhaps the biggest breakthrough will come in a tactically new business model and structure which scales well, just like the Khan Academy, Udacity, Coursera, etc all as capable and structurally new in a way that SU is not. Now, I'm not saying SU should necessarily become the academic academy, but I'm saying that it cannot claim to be a 21st century organization and hope to scale up its impact if it's embracing an old model and structure as it currently is. So instead of embracing what has existed for millennia, SU must brave, be brave in innovating and embracing a new type of institutional structure and business model. For example, currently SU is a closed garden. I already said that. In a sense, SU is actually very much behind the curve of even old-fashioned universities that have the courage to put their courses online for free. So we had a huge debate when I was at SU between two wings uh, of the faculty. SU is sitting on a gold mine of content. That's lectures that have been held at SU, that have been recorded on video, all that it takes is put them up online. And the debate has been between the abundance mindset and the scarcity mindset. And the abundance, abund, uh, abundance mindset says, put it all available out there to make a difference. The scarcity mindset says, no, we can't put it out there. I mean, if we do, who's going to pay 30 grand to come here, right? So if you look at it this way, actually all the educational institutions like Harvard, Stanford, MIT, and others who are actually doing that, they're old classic universities, they're actually ahead of the curve of SU. I mean, doesn't that sound ridiculous? So SU so far has been lacking any such courage, which means it is even further behind old school universities. I mean, what's the use of improving your curriculum every three months if only a tiny number of people paying big money will actually ever see it? Is that the way to make exponential change? For example, I'm hearing from a number of people that some faculty of SU are afraid to publish the gold mine of hundreds of videos that SU has been sitting on for years, right? In short, the, there are a few reasonable questions here. Why is it that Tesla can open source all their amazing innovation that cost them millions of dollars to develop and that cost nothing for Singularity University to record a few videos and put them online? How is it Elon Musk can step up and publish everything and open source it? How is it Google can release machine learning algorithms in the open source Apache kind of based uh, community and SU the birthplace of abundance and exponential organizations is unable to do that. Which organization do you think is more likely to be exponential? And what kind of mindsets are they supposed to aspire to? Whose ideas do you think are more likely to spread? In my view, if SU wants to change the world, the world it has to be living, the living example of an exponential organization that is clearly changing the world. The longer the gap between its preaching and its own self persists, the more its credibility is going to diminish. Other tactical flaws. 
SU is elitist and top-down. It seeks to make change from the top-down via, via leaders rather than the bottom-up via, for example, networks. It is also convenient for SU that usually leaders can pay a lot, while masses of people cannot. SU has financial incentives not to change, both personally, where key SU people likely have a personal financial stake at SU staying the way it is right now, but also institutionally, where SU takes a cut from incubated businesses, which is fine if it's the main mandate to produce businesses and to make money. But as long as it is not the mandate, then this mechanism is suboptimal. SU has a paid model of education, that is, it aims to educate but only those who have money to pay for it, and if you don't, then SU provides no help whatsoever. SU has a single model of implementation aimed at accomplishing its goal, that is to say, have an idea, start a company, create a product or service to sell, so that SU can have their 5% and you will change the world. Well. If the internet, the World Wide Web, and Wikipedia were created in SU, they would have failed miserably because none of them fits that Silicon Valley monetization model. None. And it is hard to argue that they did change the world and maybe they did it because luckily those entities didn't embrace the SU model and didn't start at SU. This single model, however, also leads to a lack of structural diversity of the SU projects because they have to fit the one and only mold proposed as opposed to the following of a more natural evolution type of an approach which leads to diverse, diverse outcomes rather than a single outcome. SU is centralized, bureaucratic and hierarchical and is becoming even more so. I met Naveen Jain at a conference a couple of years ago and Naveen Jain himself told me SU is becoming such a bureaucracy that it is becoming impossible to get anything done. His words, not mine. Strategic problems with SU. Embracing an old socioeconomic paradigm. SU is not looking at creating a new socioeconomic paradigm, but instead takes the easy road of seeking the most comfortable way to fit in the current one. Salim often says during his presentation, that SU is not a university and is not really about the singularity. I covered the first point already and gave examples of how in some ways even traditional universities are more courageous, more current and even more impactful than SU currently dares to be. Others such as Udacity and Khan Academy are clearly more scalable. So if SU is not a university, why is it running what is more or less an old university model? During exponential finance, many speakers gave examples um, of short-sightedness and inability to focus on the longer term. So why is SU only focusing on the next 5 to 15 years from now, at the most? Why do we not focus at least a little bit on the potential ways how our current socio-economic capitalist paradigm is likely to change the closer we get to the singularity? To me, capitalism is by far the best that we have so far, but it's not different than any other system. It was born during the Industrial Revolution and it is rather likely to die in our lifetime, before or around the singularity. This is what evolution is all about. Nothing stays forever, nothing, nothing is ever perfect, but it's always changing and evolving. Thus, it only makes sense that capitalism as we know it will also have to at least change or potentially even go extinct. I'm not saying SU should not make money or not embrace capitalist models. It absolutely should. Someone has to pay the bills. I mean, but, but it should not be limited only to those. And it seems to me that currently SU is a classically structured organization with a corporate model focused on selling making money, spreading the Silicon Valley capitalist gospel in riding the exponential wave as much as possible rather than being the living example of creative innovation, be it structurally as a new kind of institution or strategically as one focused on fundamentally different strategic goals than anyone else. And so the main implication of all of the above is that SU is not structured to actually address its own mandate. If SU wants to change the world, it has to naturally start with itself and be living embodiment of the change it seeks to spread. 
And this is much different from being a benefit corporation or whatever other legalist nonsense it currently is called. And I'm actually going to, I, I'm going way over time, so I'm going to skip about their global plan, but I'm happy to discuss this. So I'm just going to finish you off with uh, the punchline. And it, it's uh, uh, Peter Diamand, this is brilliant. Uh, well, actually, there's a little part before there. What I'm saying is, is this. SU is positioning like, SU is saying right now, the gatekeepers are gone. And it's positioning to be the new gatekeeper. It is like SU saying, the emperor is dead. Long live the emperor. The gatekeepers are gone. So let all old gatekeepers come to SU because we are the gatekeeper of exponential technology and the gods of disruption. And so again, in essence, it is the same old cry. The emperor is dead. Long live the emperor. My cry here tonight is rather different. It goes like this. The emperor is dead. SU has no clothes. The hell with the monarchy and long live the republic. It's going to be a new world order. At any rate, time is advancing, so let me finish strong with Peter Diamand. This is brilliant. Six Ds of exponentials that he teaches at SU. And let's see. Uh, the six Ds are these. Digitalized, deceptive, disruptive, dematerialized, demonetized, democratized or decentralized. Let's see how SU does with respect to those. So, digitalized. It is absolutely not digitalized. SU, that is. That is why a small blogger like me can have more traffic on my YouTube channel than SU has. Now, think about how insane that is. I am a no one. I am a stupid little blogger who has trouble paying his rent. SU has a trillion dollar connection and on my trillion dollar network is situated at NASA, is supported by Google and anyone else you can dream of. And my YouTube channel gets more traffic than theirs. I mean, that's great for me, but that's kind of ridiculous. So no, they're not digitalized. I am more digitalized than they are. Is it deceptive? Yes, it is deceptive. It sells exponential exponential and it sells something it doesn't have to sell in the first place. How can you sell exponential organization if you're not an exponential organization yourself? So it is deceptive. I grant him that. Is it disruptive? Yes, it is very disruptive, but mostly to people's and organizations' bank accounts. So years ago, people used to come and complain to me that SU is asking for $100,000 for a day or two long event. Then, a couple of years ago, they would come to me and, and say that SU is asking for $200,000 for a day or two long event. The latest information I have is that SU is asking for maybe $250,000, maybe half a million for a, $2, for a two day event. So the way things are going, SU will reach a billion dollars way before reaching a billion people and will disrupt the balance of a number of bank accounts, no doubt. Started, and let's not forget, it started as a not-for-profit and now is somewhat, somewhat halfway. But the reality is that it is totally for profit if you watch what's being done. Furthermore, how disruptive and exponential can be a few middle-aged people who fly first class and ask for half a million to do a two-day event? Revolutions are made by the young and the poor, if I remember. And I think of a few people whose middle name is Disruption, and they don't fly in first class, and they don't make the big money. They usually ride bicycles. And people who do what SU does are business people. People who disrupt simply do what they do. They disrupt. So is SU dematerialized? SU is geographically clustered based on in-person learning and funded by an artificial scarcity based business model. Is it demonetized? It is the exact opposite of that. It is very monetized and trying to be even more so all the time by raising its prices and creating artificial scarcity. They have the videos for free. They have everything easy. They create artificial scarcity to be able to sell abundance. So is SU democratized or decentralized? Neither. 
it is a classic top-down pyramidal type of a structure. So there is nothing fundamentally new, democratized or decentralized about it. And so I find it a great irony of exponentials that seven years later, SU is none of those things either. So let me close things down here by saying this. The emperor has no clothes, my friends. The emperor has no clothes. SU is not about the singularity. SU is not about abundance. SU is not an exponential organization. And the exponential irony is that SU charges enormous amounts of money by going to all kinds of organizations that are none of those things themselves and asks them, do you know about the singularity? Do you know about abundance? Do you know about exponential organizations? And then tells them that they should listen if they want to survive. And of course, this is what I just did. And so I do hope that SU has a big fat check for me today. <laughs> and I'm happy with only $100,000 because I'm, I'm giving them the warning that they love to give people and to get paid for, which simply goes like this. Disrupt yourself or be disrupted. Lead by example and from the front. Seek to monetize abundance rather than scarcity. Put the mission in front of the organization. Live your message. Do these things and you will reach your goals. Fail to do so and you will fail as an organization. So if SU is not about the singularity, not about abundance, and it is not about the exponential organization, then the natural question, of course, is what is SU about? Well, humor me here with this absolutely crazy and totally outlandish hypothesis. SU is a child of Silicon Valley. And Silicon Valley is about one thing. Start a business, build it up, and sell it. In other words, Silicon Valley is about IPOs. It is about taking companies public. And the strategic drift that I have been getting based on all the observable changes and what's been happening for the past few years is that Singularity University follows that mold and is being built up and groomed with the idea to eventually be sold off to someone, like Google, for example. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But that is a fundamentally different purpose than impacting the life of a billion people in a positive way. And so where does all of this leave us? I honestly have no clue. <laughs> but I do know that when the Singularity Hub never called me back to become a staff writer for them, that was the best thing that could have ever happened to me at that time because it would have not occurred to me that I can do it on my own. I also know that while I do love SU, SU does not have a monopoly over exponential technology, disruption, or the future of humanity. So while it is great to have a strong organization, it is even better if we have more than one. We need many, many SUs. That is why, for example, when people are sometimes surprised that I allow other tech bloggers and podcasters to post on my blog, link to their sites and, quote, steal my audience, I reply that that's totally awesome. Because I believe, one sentence, one sentence, because I believe in the mission more than I believe in my own organization. Because I believe we need many, many singularity universities. Singularity blogs and singularity podcasts and because I actually believe in abundance and So I plan to keep doing what I do best and if at times that comes at a high price That's okay, and I think that now you may have a better idea as to what that might look like But in the end of the day, I'm not here to be right and I'm not here to make money Unless of course Yuri has my hundred thousand dollar check somewhere I am here to start a conversation. I am here to tell you that our emperor has no clothes. And it is our responsibility to say so loud and clear. And so in that sense, I admit that I'm here to make a ruckus. But the rest is really up to you. Thank you very much, guys.